I was locked in a room back there before trying to concentrate my thoughts and the people of the TEDx thought that I had left. Uh, but uh, I apologize, I'm still here. And um, I want to speak to you about architecture. Good afternoon. Why architecture? Most people consider that architecture is a profession that deals with the making of buildings. But very few people realize that architecture is also a practice that concerns itself with the exploration of spatial concepts. All the while, researching and experimenting with systems, geometries, and proportions that get tested eventually in the real world. In many ways, architecture is the medium through which civil, uh, human civilization propagates itself through time. Let's go back for a moment, way back in the pre-Paleolithic era, when humans used to live out in the open, being hunters, fighting and hunting for their daily survival, killing animals and killing themselves, and effectively living in fear every day. One day, someone had a radical new idea. Put stones neatly around in a nice cylinder, put the roof on top, and live inside it for a night. And that was the beginning of human civilization. My claim is that human civilization is a series of those radical new ideas that move us from one stage of development into the next. In many ways, we reach those precipices and then we begin to transcend by changing our way of thinking. Most people call these paradigm shifts. So, human civilization had many great epochs, from the Egyptian civilization that codified the alphabet and social order, to the classical that explored notions of democracy, to the Ottoman that uh, uh, stood for ideas of totality, the Baroque and the modern. Our civilization is everything we have ever built, everything we have ever thought, and everything we have ever experienced. Architecture is by definition the container that holds within it the evolution, the experiences, the highest ideals of the human experience, and the vehicle through mankind makes its leaps forward into the future. I love architecture. That's part of the reason why I'm here today. But I love it because in it I can see things that nobody can explain to me. And of course, not all buildings are great, not all cities are beautiful to live in. However, those that are, they reveal an incredible architectural truth about their ideas. They embody the most wonderful explorations of the human mind. It's striving for excellence, for balance, for spatial release, for color and harmony. Architecture transcends us. Architects apply their creativity in the development of architectonic ideas. And in designing buildings, many find themselves meditating broader issues, such as ecology, futuristic proposals, otherworldly architecture, but always with a purpose to expand the boundaries of the discipline and to make the world a better place. It is also true that sometimes the work becomes more about the production of objects rather than the production of the ideas of those objects. Architecture deals in many cases with very complex sets of problems that involve multiple stakeholders, and it becomes necessary to engage, to learn, and to incorporate others' desires in order to realize those designs. I'm going to show you a piece of digital archaeology something um, that we developed in uh, the year 2000. Can we get the sound up, please? Where the development of um, the architectural concept was based on the formation of fluid, flexible gravity fields that become modes of, of representation of density, of human activity within an abstract space, and through that, 
we begin to form what the architecture is going to be. In this particular case, what can be seen as a roof and what can be seen as a concourse plane begin to fold together to create a variable, flexible, fluid ge ge geography, if you like, that later becomes um, a kind of building. In its static form, this diagram encapsulates three basic qualities. Um, form, movement, and matter. And showing a new way how to develop architecture as a series of fluid forces rather than uh, a mere assemblage of rooms or boxes. In many ways, this was, for our office, a radical new idea. And that was the result. In 2005, this building was was realized, it's a building that barely touches the ground. It opens it the ground up to new, unexpected activities. The walls are there, but they are never meant to be walls, so they open themselves up to the inside and to the outside, gradually and with an interplay of, um, of light and vision. The operation code for architects and for designers of various fields is to research and experiment with the construction of those alternative worlds alternative ideas that explore possibilities of novel spaces and new ways of living. Architecture becomes, therefore, a vehicle for good design and for grounding reality, and not a spectacle or a vehicle for delusion. How does architecture contribute to society today? If we go back to the 1970s, this picture produced by William Anders, one of the astronauts of the Apollo 8 mission, took this picture of the planet Earth. It was the first time when humankind saw itself from the outside. All of a sudden, all the conflict of a bipolar Cold War period almost began disappearing. It made no sense anymore, because for the first time we understood the loneliness of our planet in the vastness of space, we understood the fragility of our environment. Imagine that on this blue dot, that little skin that you see there is the atmosphere in which we live in. That's all the weather, that's all the space we occupy, and everything you think every day and every night happens there. And at the same time, the first version of the Internet began to be established. And it was as if the heliocentric universe gave way to a radical new idea again, to that of the networked universe. The world today has become gradually more interconnected. What's happening? Vast global transportation systems connect all of us together. Today we can travel to distant continents for holiday. We can jump into cities from one place of the continent to the other in a matter of hours. As a result of technological advancements, world population has increased sixfold in the last 100 years. We went from a mere 1, million, 1 billion people in the 1900s to 6.5 billion now. Networks of communications and infrastructure expand, and cities are not isolated anymore. They become interconnected with one another, and they begin to relate to each other. Global immigration has increased. People move around, they make families abroad, they um, work in different cities, and as a result, we can say that we are more nomadic than ever. Networks, these kinds of networks, control our safety, hospital equipment, and they are omnipresent. This map of the internet is a simplified view of what's going on, and it, it shows very simplistically the linkage of different sites together, but one can see that the internet is like a new brain. Like a human brain is a network of synapses. Like a city is a network of activities. Now, these are very potent ideas. And to understand where we are today and how we think today and how our collective consciousness is changing, is important because we can begin to influence the way we produce our world in new ways. Digital technologies and digital designs give us 
an opportunity to introduce these notions into the creative work that we do. And they are very potent tools in understanding our uh, living patterns. In this particular animation, we explored in a master plan study how the 24-hour activity in a block of CD can begin to give us clues as to what buildings should be placed where so that we can minimize circulation, we can avoid car traffic, and essentially optimize um, the assemblage, if you like, or the, the size of uh, a piece of city that was meant to be for, for uh, 50,000 people. In addition to that, these new digital tools give us the possibility to understand how we can interrelate building forms uh, more effectively, how to develop them in ways that we were unable to do before, and condense the cities of the, the mass of cities and leaving more space for natural landscape to remain intact. At the same time, and this is not a realistic proposal, but it is a, a pilot project, if you like, and an experimental scenario, we can begin to envision cities as holistic objects, where whole regions can be designed, analyzed, and developed looking into aspects of energy consumption, of infrastructure, and systematization as a whole, rather than as a mere agglomeration of individual buildings. The future has been imagined before, and some of those fantasies are now becoming a reality. The integration of technology into the design process is a powerful new reality. We do live in a post-industrial digital era, and it is important to ask, how is it possible to develop a harmonious symbiosis with the new technology? Well, whether in a scenario of cybernetic reality or one where an artificially intelligent lifestyle uh, is the next step, human beings are being called to establish the principles that will carry us through to the future. It is important today, more than ever, to realize the principles and the values have to, that have sustained us through the ages and to purposely move to make them part of our digital existence. Let's look at some examples. In this case, um, we can use mathematical algorithms to develop meaningful architectural forms. In this particular case, we look at the Lorentz attractor algorithm, which basically defines the movement of a particle in between two gravity fields or two poles. Um, and that notion becomes the inspiration for the design of this gallery a floating gallery where the movement of people through the building gives the actual form of the building itself. So the building now is not designed as a composition from the outside, as you used to do in the classical or neoclassical eras, but we begin to design and optimize the movement of people and the experience of the building from the inside. The golden ratio exists everywhere. It's in nature, it's in the man-made. In this case, it is expressed as an iconic new structure, similar, one could say, to the Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty rising up into the sky. In bionic architecture, we can find leads into ways of fusing the natural and the artificial landscape in residential development. Somewhere closer to home, our proposal for the School of Biological Sciences for the University of Cyprus the roof becomes um, the roof of the building becomes a kind of a tent forest that at the same time shades the plaza below, but at the same time the cavities of those trees help ventilate the biological laboratories below. Let's go back and look at this particular city for a moment. I spoke to you a little earlier about networks and how a network can be seen as an organism in much in the same way that a human brain is part of an organism with multiple synapses. 
Think this, that a network requires each and every part of it to function and to cooperate in order to achieve an optimized or healthy functionality. In looking deeper, it doesn't make sense to look too much into the past or too much into the future. It doesn't even make too much sense to look deep in outer space or deep in inner space. But what does make a lot of sense is to look deeper at the now, at the place where we all think, live, and imagine our lives together. You know, Nicosia is a divided city, and we see this division, but I want to really understand why. I see a broken network, and people say it is a tragedy, and most probably it is. But the city is not broken. It has just been interrupted. Its natural flow in time has been broken. It's almost like a stroke, if you like. And as a result, it has become dysfunctional. I don't think it needs to be fixed. I think it needs to regrow. My idea is to see a ring being formed around the Venetian walls of the city. To transform the moat into a green park, a kind of free zone, if you like, where citizens from all nationalities, ethnicities, political denominations, whatever, can enter and they can simply meet a greet. Like a kind of way to connect, a place to say hello while you're jogging or riding your bicycle, or as a circumventing bridge, a little bit like a, a healing experiment, if you like, like a meet your neighbors kind of story. In conclusion, our architecture, our life in this new century is driven and will continue to be driven by change. Let's participate and let's innovate. Let's pioneer our future now. Thank you.